Welcome to the Paleontology Collections at Harvard University. I'm Jessica Cundiff, the Curatorial Associate in Invertebrate and Vertebrate Paleontology. These collections date back to the founding of the Museum of Comparative Zoology in 1859. Earliest collections were material purchased by Louis Agassiz, our founder. Uh, he was particularly fond of fossil fish collections. He requested specimens from all over the world. This is a fossil fish from the Jurassic of Germany. These guys would have been living during the time of the dinosaurs. This specimen is unique that we have, we have the whole animal preserved and there's very detailed preservation of the scales. This is a fossil fish from the Lyme Regis of England Jurassic Age. Uh, Lyme Regis is a very famous fossil locality uh, where Mary Anning, the first woman paleontologist, collected fish fossils and other fossils. Vertebrate paleontology is about, we have about 100,000 specimens uh, stored in, well, all around us here. We're standing in where the fish material is, but we also have amphibians, reptiles, and mammal collections here. So this is uh, Ariops, which is a large amphibian from the Permian. This is part of the material that one of our former curators, Al Romer, collected from Central Texas. Probably the most important collections uh, that we have here. Researchers come from all over the world to look at that material and study it. This is Cayentotherium, which is from the early Jurassic during the time of the dinosaurs. Uh, and this is a reptile, but we're starting to see mammal-like features in reptiles at that time. This is the skull of Cayentotherium. We have the front teeth. Uh, this is the lower jaw. So you see that the teeth are looking very mammal-like with um, the large incisor. So this is what we think Cayentotherium would have looked like. Still a reptile, but very mammal-like. So this specimen is Cronosaurus. If you've been to the Harvard Museum of Natural History, you've seen the full skeleton on display. The, the entire skeleton is about 40 feet long. This is just the tip of, the, of its snout. This is from the Cretaceous, about the, the time that the last dinosaurs lived. And this was probably one of the largest marine reptiles that lived at that time. This is a specimen that probably looks more familiar to you. This is a uh, fossil cave bear from the Pleistocene, from the Ice Age. You see the large incisors and the more flat molars. This specimen would have been about quite a bit larger than a modern brown bear. This is a skull of, a cast of a skull of one of our early human relatives. Often there, there might be one or two really good specimens of a fossil. Uh, and so not every museum can have that material for comparative purposes. So the museum with that particular specimen will make cast, which are then either sold or exchanged with other museums. So they have comparative material. I really love working with fossils. It was the fossils themselves that first got me interested in geology and paleontology. Often these are some of the few specimens that we have of a particular genus and species. We have various projects going on from rehousing specimens, taking photographs of a specimen that a researcher far away needs for their research. Today we have 3D scanning and printing technologies that makes the finer details and features of a specimen better captured. We have material that will be brought back after field work that will then need to be accessioned and cataloged and numbered so the curators and their students can begin doing their research on this material with the purpose to publish it so everything needs to be numbered so it can be easily referenced in the publication.